Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I want to share with you today all of the seeds that I have recently purchased and I want to share with you like for anybody who's wondering what you need in order to start seeds indoors in your home. If you're new here, my name is Sierra. I garden in zone 6A Ohio. I grow a lot of houseplants and I also garden outdoors. So I'm growing, you know, bedding plants, vegetables, herbs, um, and I also share content about my chickens and everything that goes along with keeping backyard chickens. So let's start with my seed haul. I told myself <laughs> the end of last year that I didn't need to buy any seeds, but unfortunately I was unable to keep that promise to myself. And I have purchased seeds. I bought seeds indoor or seeds um, in stores. And then I also bought seeds online from two different retailers. So the first order of seeds that I placed was with M.I. Gardener. Here are the seeds that I got from M.I. Gardener. Now I believe these were all two dollars a pack. I think on his site, I can't remember right now, but most if not all of the seeds are around two dollars a pack. Um, I didn't pay for shipping on my order at all. I think I either I either reached the minimum shopping uh, amount or they had free shipping on their site. I'm not sure either one at this second. Mammoth basil. I actually grew this last year and it was such a beautiful plant. The leaves are huge. They are just like any other basil besides the fact that the leaves get really really wide and big. They're a pretty bushy plant, 18 to 20 inches in size. Um, and, you know, the basil is very similar to other basils as far as flavor and scents. But I love foliage. I'm a foliage lover at heart. So I found these to be super beautiful. The next pack I got was red. She so I believe that's how you pronounce it and I thought this looked really cool on their site it's an herb it's supposed to um, have some spice to it good for cooking when in Asian cuisine the plant gets 18 to 36 inches tall and I'm actually just reading the back of the packet but this is what drew me to this plant so I'm looking forward to trying this this is a new uh, plant and new seed for me this year this is Purple of Sicily Cauliflower. I thought it looked really beautiful. I'm not great at growing cauliflower, so if I can get this plant to just even produce a purple head, I would love that. Tomato Orange Currant or Orange Currant Tomato. I thought these looked really cute. They're very small um, tomatoes on this plant. I'm looking forward to this. So excited. This is Gobstopper Tomato. I thought it looked really cool um, and I want to give it a try. I love trying new tomatoes, especially if they're a sweeter tomato. Um, I'm going to give that a try. So this one looks really cool and it actually kind of does look like a Gobstopper. So I'm excited to try this. Right here is Piccolino Basil. I, I don't know why, but I really love like tiny plants. Um, this reminded me of spicy globe basil, which is a small um, basil. And then when I saw this piccolino basil, I had to give it, I had to get it so I could give it a try and compare it to the spicy globe basil. This plant gets 18 inches tall and it's like a bush type of um, grow habit, growth habit. Next up, I've got cumin. This cumin is so smelly like it smells so good to me when I opened the package all I could smell was cumin we love cumin um, we love to use it in cooking so this is um, just so exciting to have this is actually going to be my second year growing cumin um, the first year last year I started it way too early and it was flowering inside my house like long before I could plant it outside so this year I'm going to take my time um, and start it a little later. That way I can actually um, see this plant grow well in my garden this year. Next up, Pablo Crisp Head Lettuce. I picked this because it looked really pretty. 
I am going to be starting um, like lettuce seeds and all that in my spring garden. So I thought this would be really pretty to have out there. This is red vein sorrel. I've heard a lot of things about sorrel, so I'm excited to grow this. Um, I hope that it will be pretty easy to grow. I've never grown it before, so we'll see. It has 50 days till maturity, so that's exciting. It'll be like a quick turnaround type of plant. If you've grown sorrel before, let me know what you use it in um, to give me some ideas. Next up, black Spanish radish. I'm excited about this because I love the way that this radish looks. Um, and I do like radishes. I don't grow a ton of them, but I thought this would be fun to grow um, and try out in some salads or some uh, maybe like pickling recipe. Watermelon radish, which looked I bought this solely based on what it looks like <laughs> and I think it looks so pretty so I'm excited about growing this radish too. Lemongrass. I grow lemongrass every single year. I love it. We use it for tea. We use it in cooking. Um, I actually give it to the chickens too. They love lemongrass. It's such a good little grass to grow. Um, by the end of the season it's like huge and it germinates readily from seed. I've got a brandy wine black tomato. I've heard a lot about brandy wine tomatoes, so I'm just want to try this one for myself. I have not tried brandy wine tomato ever in my entire life, so I'm looking forward to this. Pink Swiss chard. I grow Swiss Swiss chard every single year. My chickens love it. We grow it for ourselves. We cook with it, use it in salads, we saute it, all that good stuff. So I thought this one looked really pretty and I'm excited to see this growing in my garden this year. Persimmon tomato. Now this is our favorite tomato variety so far that we've tried and it has such a good flavor. Um, it is a tomato my husband requested that we grow again. Last year we didn't really do a ton as far as t growing tomatoes and actually growing like the big tomatoes. We had a lot of cherry tomatoes last year but none of the big um, variety tomatoes so I'm excited to have this back in the garden this year purple Vienna kohlrabi this is the second this will be the second year that I've ex experienced growing kohlrabi and I'm looking forward to trying this um, I don't have any significant remembrance of kohlrabi other than that the flavor isn't like super strong you know kind of like a cucumber where I mean it has a flavor but it's like kind of not flavored if that makes sense but I'm looking forward to growing this it's super pretty I love having um, colored vegetables prize head leaf lettuce again picked because it looked pretty but I am excited to try it I love different lettuces and the flavors that they can offer to a salad and just make your salads way more dynamic than just like bag lettuce or iceberg lettuce which you know tastes like water basically so super excited so those are all the seeds that I got from MI Gardener. Next, let's check out my store-bought seeds. So I accidentally bought duplicate seeds um, while in stores. You know how you like forget that you bought something already. So just right off the bat, we've got the black Spanish radish and we've got the watermelon radish. And I think that is it for duplicates. But look at this, I got this really pretty beet. Put that up there. Look at that. So pretty. I, I cannot wait to see this this year. I'm not a huge like I don't think beets taste that good except for like roasted. I like roasted beets but I also do uh, raw beets in my juice that I make or even like uh, smoothies because of the health, health benefits of them but to me they taste like dirt. So but I, I like them and I eat them anyways because they're healthy for you. Right here we have some Cleomi. I love Cleomi. This one is Rose Queen. Looking forward to growing this in the garden. This right here is Balsam Camilla. This is so pretty. I cannot wait to grow this in the garden this year. Last but not least for the store bought is this Black Creme Tomato. 
Looking forward to having those big giant tomatoes this year. I cannot wait. Okay, so my last seed order is from Baker's Creek. And I want to show you guys this packaging is super cute. Isn't that so cute? I love that. Okay. Now let's go ahead and open this up. And see what we got. Hopefully no duplicates. I don't think there are any in here, but I wouldn't be surprised if there are because I have a tendency to double up on things unknowingly. Okay, that is my invoice. Alrighty, this is my free seed. It's a Brassica Old Tokyo Komatsuna. Komatsuna? Looks like this is a spinach mustard green so that should be delicious next up we've got these look at this look at this carrot it is absolutely gorgeous Leela Lu Sang carrot so pretty okay look how gorgeous this is this is amaranth it's called pink beauty so pretty Last year when I grew amaranth, it did not do well at all. But the year prior, when I grew amaranth, it, it was amazing. So this year I would love my amaranth to really like... I want to have a lot of it in my garden, if that makes sense. Okay, next up. Okay, let me look at this. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so this year in the garden, I... This is going to be, last year was the year, this year is the year too for colas, colas, coleus, and can't, what is it, coleus and begonias in my garden this year. Um, I'm going to be growing a ton more colas, a ton more begonias, um, among other things, but these are going to be my like, I'm really going to go in hard on these plants because they can fit pretty much anywhere in the garden. Sun, shade, like they are good and they are full of color. So I am going to be going hard on starting those seeds and getting those seeds out into my garden for a big colorful display. So I have a lot of cola seeds and Baker's Creek had a couple of different varieties that I wanted to try alongside um, like the multi packs of like the like you know the seed packs where you can get like a couple of different varieties in one seed pack. That's what I have down in my seed um, storage bin. I have a lot of those, but this I bought specific varieties um, to grow from Baker's Creek. Okay, so the first one is Col Colocha Sunset. I hope I'm saying that right. Colocha sunset gorgeous this plant is supposed to be around 12 inches tall gorgeous colocha rose colas gorgeous and then i have two more this one oh, i love this this is folia picasso colas gorgeous i grew something similar to this last year i believe and it was um, a, of the Kong variety. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Next up, I have Folia Mosaic. Gorgeous. So, Colises are so good at adding a pop of color. They're like mostly, most of the varieties that I grow are multicolored. So, it's like a rainbow of colors on one plant, and I love that. I so excited for that this year okay last but not least in this seed full-blown seed haul i i am so excited about this so excited and it is such a pretty pretty flower look at this dandelion pink or pink dandelion gorgeous 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 okay so now we're going to discuss what exactly you need to start seeds indoors. Now I'm going to tell you that you can make this as cheap or as expensive as you deem necessary. It is your household, you do what works best for you. 
I can tell you this, the most cheapest way to start seeds is to start them outside after your last frost date. You have nothing but the seed packet to buy, um, plant it in the ground, water it, your expense would be water. Do you know what I mean? So that to me is the most cheapest way to start seeds. However, if you want to start them in your house, um, the next up cheapest way to start them is to use recycled, um, you know, pots. So like your yogurt cups, your K cups, your milk cartons, your, what else can you put? You can put seeds in anything. All you have to do is have a drainage hole in whatever you're going to start them in. You can make pots out of old toilet paper rolls. Um, you can use paper towel rolls to fold it into a pot. You can use newspaper to fold into a pot. There are so many ways to make it cost friendly with the stuff that you already have. So if you're a family that loves to buy, you know, the yogurt cups, save those cups, wash them out, pop a hole, put some soil in, pop your seeds in, put it in a bright window. Now, Putting it in a bright window leads us to lighting. You can start your seeds in a window that's bright. That is perfectly fine to do so. I will say that if you are starting your seeds in a bright window, you are going to have to be very diligent about rotating those seed pots, those trays, because plants are plants will grow towards the light. So what you'll see is that as your seedlings emerge, they're gonna start to bend towards that window because that is where they're getting light. They will move to where the light is coming from. So you wanna be very diligent on turning your seeds regularly. And by regularly, I mean, I would say every day, probably give them a quarter turn. So just to recap, you can start seeds in anything the cheapest way to start them indoors is by using recycled material and you can get soil i would try not to use potting soil i would try to use seed starting mix if you can um, however seeds have been germinating in ground for you know thousands of years um, you can try to start your seeds in potting mix some will germinate Starting in seed starting, uh, seed, specific seed starting mix is supposed to help you germinate more seeds um, and eliminate any sort of like contaminants that could cause your seeds not to germinate or cause the plants to die, um, any sort of thing like that. That's why it's important to use seed starting soil, but also you don't have to. You can start it in any soil that you have or any soil that you want to buy however seed starting mix you will likely get the best germination out of those seeds okay so the next tier up for starting seeds would be to buy pots the six pack seed starting pots i buy mine from amazon um, they're super cheap you get a bunch of them i would also buy the black drip trays so that you can put your seed starting pots on the drip tray and water it there and you don't have any mess underneath. I would also grow lights. Um, right now grow lights are a lot more affordable um, and I say affordable based on you know my experience um, buying grow lights. Um, you can, there are so many different varieties um, online that you can buy. You can do a grow light bulb and put it in a, you know, gooseneck lamp over top of your seeds. You can buy grow lights that are um, like on a tripod. Um, you can buy grow lights that you have to hang from something. So whether you hang it from a shelf, whether you hang it from a ceiling, there's so many different types of grow lights. There is 
definitely one for you in your price range i will link the grow lights that i just bought but i use a mixture of things so i have grow lights from when i first started seeds that are still good grow lights that still work um i have grow lights that i bought last year which aren't technically grow lights they are shop lights and then i bought some grow lights um a few months ago that are marketed as actual grow lights but you can go even further from there you can get more specific and more expensive with your grow lights there are grow lights that are hundreds of dollars and will will be so much better for your plants but i am here to tell you that you don't have to have those super expensive grow lights to be able to start your seeds, to have a full garden, um, to have success with your seeds. So you can make it as um, cost friendly or as expensive as you want. So everything I use, I will link for you in the description so that you can take a look, see what might work for you and what might not. Let me know in the comment section um, if you guys have any questions. And also, you can share the, the methods that you use for starting seeds. Are you starting more on the cheaper end? Or are you more of a, I don't want to say, higher end seed starter? What are your favorite products to use? I would love to hear about that because I'm always um, trying to do things better um, make the process of growing seeds indoors easier. So I would love to see um, what you guys use, especially if it's something different than what I use. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.